Well, the wisdom I would pass on, and I was chair and I used to do this, would be to tell young men or women entering the field that you, you really can do both, teach and, and do research, and you can be good at both and uh, make a career. Um, your teaching can inform your research and your research will inform your teaching. So you can have it both ways. Uh, I think uh, even administration and, and service can also be, be done. It's just that there are different stages in your career where different things have greater importance. Early days it's extremely important that a young professor get their research program started. Uh, you need to write grants and you need to get the money and do the research and write the papers and have graduate students and have them graduate and I call it turn the crank a few times and establish an independent research program. You need to teach for sure but the more time you invest in your research program at that stage of your career in my view the better. When you've established that independence and you've gotten your tenure or very close to getting it then I think there's a t time where you can branch out and start to look at your teaching style and others teaching styles and have that inform your research for example um, as well but uh, early days you really do need to focus um, um, on your research. Your, your teaching can become part of your research, indeed it did for me. So after I won the 3M teaching award I was very soon after that invited to Guelph, University of Guelph, uh, for a symposium they have. And what they wanted uh, me to say is, well, why am, am I a good teacher? What is it that makes me good? And it was the very first time in my life I ever had to reflect on that. Like, what is it? Why did I get that 3M award? What, what sort of things can I bring to the table? What can I tell a new professor? So I developed several techniques I used in the classroom. Um, naturally, we each have our personalities that you, you, know, you can't really teach somebody about, but there are ways you can improve. So that started me on a journey of learning about learning. Uh, how, do we learn, how do we learn as individuals? What is my teaching style? Um, there are various inventories of both teaching and learning styles, and I, I studied those and uh, sort of saw where I fit in and how my style appealed to a certain kind of learner but then how another style might appeal to other types of learners. So, so that for me was an extremely important kind of part of my career, where then I started to write papers even on uh, teaching and learning that were published in, in, in the literature. So, so the <clears throat> scholarship of teaching and learning became part of my research portfolio. And I have several publications that I probably put in my um, resume. On the other hand, uh, and this is often stated, not always true, but it's often stated that your research will inform your teaching. For an engineer, that's very easy. Uh, I did research on very practical things, and I could bring that into the classroom. Probably more important, though, that uh, engineers in particular bring their experiences into the classroom, because you're dealing with young engineers, and they're not as worried about your research as they are about, you know, how do I do this in, in the real world? <laughs> like, what is it like? And so. So that, that, you know, flow of information goes both ways, I think. And so that really is my advice to, to young people all the time, is that you really can work both sides of the street, as they say. Um, you don't need to be limited, but there's, uh, you know, different times of your career when one or the other might be more important.